Hi everyone and welcome to Draw My Science. This is kind of like those Draw My Life videos that all the cool YouTubers do, except instead of my life, I'm going to tell you about science today. So our topic for this video is our first learning goal, which is describe matter using physical properties, including mass, volume, and density. Now, to accomplish this goal, the first thing we have to do is figure out what exactly is matter anyways. Well, matter is a substance that has mass and takes up space. So some examples could be a delicious apple, a cute little puppy dog, or maybe even a pencil because all three of those objects have mass and take up space. Now we can describe matter using a couple different things, our sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste. There we go. These are qualitative properties. So that's one way we can describe matter. But there's other ways too, like we could say what the temperature of the puppy dog is. Or we could say what the what the weight of the apple is, and I guess those are someone's feet on the scale, or we could measure how long the pencil is. And these are quantitative properties of matter. Now one specific quantitative property of matter we have to talk about is mass. But first we have to think about what's the difference between weight and mass? Well, Weight has to do with gravity. So here we have the Earth and then we have the Sun. Now, because Earth has a smaller mass than the Sun, gravity is less here. So we would weigh a lot more on the Sun than we do on the Earth. Well, mass is different. Mass basically is just the amount of matter in a substance or in an object. So it wouldn't matter if you were on Earth or on the Sun or the Moon or anywhere else, your mass would always be the same. Mass is measured in grams. Now, we also have to talk about the amount of space an object takes up because that's the second half of the matter definition. Well, this is volume. So there are two different ways to calculate volume. If you have something like a rectangular prism or a cube, then you can use the formula length times width times height. So let's say on our rectangular prism here, we have a length of five centimeters, a width of two centimeters, and a length of seven centimeters. We would multiply the length times the width times the height, and we would end up with 70, five times two times seven, but we also have to multiply the units together. So centimeter times centimeter times centimeter means that centimeters cubed is going to be our unit for volume of rectangular prisms or cubes. But what if we have something that's not a rectangular prism or a cube, like a paper clip? <clears throat> for this one, we're going to use a method called water displacement. So for water displacement, we would grab ourselves a graduated cylinder. There we go. And we would fill it up with a specific amount of water. In this case, we're going to fill it up with three milliliters of water to start. Now, of course, we're going to make sure we are eye level with the bottom of the meniscus because we want to make sure we are reading accurately that amount of water. There we go. So now we are going to take our paper clip and we're going to put it into the water. There it is. And when we put it in, we notice that the level of the water goes up to four milliliters. So to figure this out, you would take where the water ends up, four milliliters, minus the amount that it started with, three milliliters, and that means the paper clip's volume is one milliliter. Now, I'm gonna draw a cube that is going to be a pretty classic standard cube. It's going to be one centimeter 
by one centimeter by one centimeter. So to calculate the volume, I do one centimeter times one centimeter times one centimeter. And that gives me one centimeter cubed. Now, if I had a graduated cylinder that had one milliliter of water in it like this, the volume of that water would be one milliliter. And one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter of water. The volume is the same. That's really important to know. Okay, so now let's move on to our third really important physical property, density. So what exactly is density? Well, basically it is a specific amount of mass in a specific amount of space. And we remember that the amount of space an object takes up is the volume. So density combines mass and volume together. Okay, so I'm going to have two bowls set up here and they are gonna have equal volumes to them. And in one bowl, I'm gonna put a bunch of cotton balls. So I'm gonna fill it up completely. Now it's a little overflowed, but you know what I mean. In the second bowl, I'm going to fill it up with, I bet you're thinking tomatoes. Nope, not tomatoes, gumballs. So gumballs are a little bit heavier than cotton balls, but I'm going to be filling the bowl up just like I did with the cotton balls. So the volume of the two bowls is going to be equal. So each bowl is going to hold 300 milliliters worth of material. Now I'm gonna make a little mistake here. Nope, not 30 milliliters, there we go. 300 milliliters, so the volume is equal. But cotton balls are a lot lighter than gumballs. So the mass of the bowl of cotton balls is 20 grams and the gumballs is 200 grams. So that means the bowl with the cotton balls has low density and with the gumballs has high density. So if the volume is the same, the one with more mass has more density. Okay, now we're gonna stick with the cotton balls and the gumballs for a second, but this time we're gonna make their masses equal. So I'm gonna bring out a little teeter-totter here, and we are going to get a big stack full of cotton balls on one side. So we're just gonna keep stacking them up. We need a lot of cotton balls because they're really, really, really light. <clears throat> so up and up the stack goes. So we have this huge stack of cotton balls on one side. Now gumballs, again, have more mass to each one than cotton balls do. So I'm gonna end up with a fairly small pile of gumballs, but the mass is going to be the same. As you can see, the teeter-totter is perfectly straight, so the mass is equal here. Okay, so on one side of my scale teeter-totter, I have about, I'm thinking about it here, about 200 grams of cotton balls and then 200 grams of gumballs. Now you can see that the pile of cotton balls is really big, so we're going to say it's about 672 milliliters, whereas the gumballs is only 58 milliliters. So the cotton balls, again, have low density while the gumballs have high density. If the masses are equal, high volume means low density, so kind of the opposite of the last example. So this is really, really important to remember. If you have the same volume, like the same size bowl or a can of Diet Coke and a can of regular Coke, as the mass goes up, the density is going to go up. If you have the same mass though, like a pile of feathers or a pile of bricks or a pile of cotton balls and a pile of gumballs, as the volume goes up, the density goes down. Now, because density is a quantitative property, of course, we have to be able to calculate it. So the formula for density is mass divided by volume, or D equals MV. 
And I think the best way to remember this formula is to remember that we love density because the density formula can kind of look like a heart if you do it correctly. If you put it backwards with the V over the M, you're not gonna get a heart. So always remember, we love density. Okay, so let's actually calculate some density and see exactly what it's telling us. So here I'm going to have a cube that is one cubic centimeter. So it's one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. And I'm gonna fill it up with some very teeny tiny little marbles. Let me add one more marble into the corner there. There we go. And each of these little marbles equals one gram. There you go. So there are 15 marbles in the box, so that's 15 grams. And this is one cubic centimeter, so I'm gonna use my formula, mass divided by volume, and I'm gonna find that the density of this box is 15 grams per cubic centimeter. So density is telling us how many grams are in one cubic centimeter or one milliliter of a substance. Okay, so I think that's going to be it for today. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at katie.kramer at pccsk12.com. I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.